Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today for our 25th session, we'll be covering the names of Al Nasir, Al Ghalib, and Al Fatah, uh, names that have the meanings of uh, the helper, the prevailer, and the opener. So, inshallah, to begin with uh, Al Nasir and Al Ghalib. Uh, when we go through the inevitable periods in our life where we feel embattled, where we uh, are physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually taken to task, and maybe even feeling defeated at times, uh, it's in these times of uh, darkness, of downtroddenness, uh, and of desperation uh, that we are most in need of help. And it's oftentimes in these times that we are not just most in need of help, but we're also most aware that we are in need of help, that we ourselves cannot overcome this alone, that we are in need of some kind of external help or relief. Uh, and it's in these spaces where uh, Allah introduces these names of Al-Nasir and Al-Ghalib. And so the root of Nasir means helping the oppressed, helping the downtrodden, helping those who are in need or that which is in need. Uh, and the word for victory is also from the same root as well, uh, Nasr. And the word Nasr is an aggrandizement of the root word, and it refers to the best, the ho most holistic kind of help for big and small problems alike, and reminds us that true help and true victory are that which are come from Allah. And so seeing the connection of the two, and that not only does Allah give aid and give victory, but Allah is also Al-Ghalib, um, the name that has the meanings and the root meanings and connotations of uh, prevailing over, to overcome something, to uh, be able to champion, uh, inevitably the one who prevails at the end of the day, the one whom none can defeat or overcome in that aspect. And so there's different types of victory uh, that come from Allah, different types of aids. When we talk about victory, uh, we also talk about this help. So seeing these two more or less in our discussion here uh, in a similar vein, um, but sometimes we may exchange the two, but uh, in, inherently they do have, they are, you know, two different things, but they come under this umbrella uh, of this aspect of a Nasir uh, who does grant victory and who does grant help. Um, so there's the external victory that we have in our uh, actions, in our uh, struggles. Um, we see it in the Isla in Islamic history and battles uh, in different initiative. And this looks different for uh, depending on who is uh, engaging in you know, the, the help or who needs the help of Allah at that time. Um, in the Treaty uh, of Hudaybiyah, you know, this was a victory that the Quran had lifted up that Inna fatahna laka fatan mubina, uh, that verily we've given you a manifest victory, but for the Sahaba, for all the companions at the time, they felt like this treaty was a loss, as many of them had felt that this was not a uh, victory in any sense. Umar who was one of the outspoken uh, kind of critics of this, of this treaty initially, thinking that this was a, a manifest defeat. Um, and the revelation then came, said, no, this is a victory. So uh, victory might not look like what we imagine it, to look like, you know, in a sec with respect to us kind of coming out on top, exactly how we see it um, in the timeline that we have in our mind. Um, but it, it, it actually causes us to pause. This name causes us to pause because uh, that victory that might be in our struggle or our initiative, it will look inherently, it may look inherently different, um, but it doesn't negate that it's not a victory. Um, so conviction in these names teaches us that there's purpose in everything in the world. Uh, that, that occurs. And then even if it appears to be outwardly bad, uh, knowing that uh, what appears to be uh, prevailing externally is in fact Allah prevailing in different ways, that Allah has, uh, Allah prevails over all. And even though we may not be able to see it or make those conclusions due to our finite uh, limitations, does not negate the fact that there is the divine at work. Uh, in Surah Yusuf, Allah lifts up that uh, Allah prevails, always prevails in his purpose, uh, even though most people do not realize it. And so seeing that uh, we, we sometimes get caught up in just the immediate, uh, you know, the, the immediacy of certain things. We're, we're only uh, kind of 
limited to, to kind of processing an event on its uh, on its surface level, but not seeing the deeper implications. And so this is really key when understanding this name and these names that they work below the surface as well. They, they work in holistic ways that, that has to give us reason to pause and not jump to a conclusion to assume one thing or another. And so knowing that Allah is al-ghalib is to know that even when it looks like injustice or those who are doing wrong or oppressing uh, or just on the wrong side of the spectrum are winning, that ultimately they can never prevail over Allah's plan. So when we think about you know, certain injustices happening in our world, when we see certain people who uh, have you know, been able to exploit other people, do you know, heinous injustices, yet seem to be at the top of the world in terms of status and unaffected by anything, remembering that uh, even in their passing, even at the end of their dhulm or their oppression or their injustice, that uh, they may not have you know, been seen, uh, seen the tangible justice that we see in this world in the sense they may have been brought to court or whatever it may look like, uh, but to know that the spectrum of justice, the, the spectrum of uh, giving that justice does not end for a person right at death. That, that spectrum that continues uh, up until the day of judgment, the day of recompense, and even after death. And we know that Allah is the one who is al-adal, who, uh, who is most just. Allah is al-muqsit. Um, so Allah uh, has um, justice uh, as the centerfold, and Allah will give justice and give those whom, uh, who have been uh, products of injustice and give those who are the perpetuators of injustice uh, fair due. And so uh, knowing that even in our lifetime, if we don't see that, that that doesn't mean it won't be coming, that they, that this recompense will not be coming, that this injustice will go unpunished, uh, or that those who are uh, not given justice will not be given justice, that they will be given justice, inshallah. Um, and so apart from the external victories, we also see internal victories, that Allah can help us overcome those internal battles that we are facing uh, between our struggles, our desires, our uh, internal obstacles that, that, that are inside us, that challenge us, uh, our lower selves that sometimes give us that voice that tells us that we can't do it or that try to go, make us go one way or another. Uh, the demons that we face, very real in our, in our uh, own lives, like, you know, just, just, just the different things in, in our mind that sometimes hold us back or very different things that, that any of us kind of face, the uh, internal challenges that we have that are just as real as the external. Um, and so this victory that comes internal or even external, uh, it comes with three things that, that, that are kind of required. They're, they're kind of the baseline for uh, necessitating victory to, to at least get into that state of achieving a help or a victory, but having faith, um, have, taking action in some respect, and to uh, maintain this all with in a state of sober, in a state of not just generic patience, but to persevere, um, to, to understand that there's a higher purpose. It doesn't negate that you can't have certain emotions, that you won't get upset, that you won't get frustrated, that you won't just throw your hands up out of just like feeling like you've given up in a sense, but uh, having that, that substantive patience to know that, inshallah, that regardless of what is happening, Allah is helping. And uh, an example of this comes in, uh, the, the, uh, the, in the aftermath of Ta'if, uh, the time when the Prophet ﷺ related that this was the worst uh, day of his life, uh, the story of Ta'if, many of us know that you know, the Prophet ﷺ went to go preach to this town, he was driven out uh, basically by the youth and you know, stoned uh, at the command of the chiefs uh, you know, to, to be stoned uh, on his way out, so chased out to where his shoes had filled with blood and he finally, after getting away from them, he finds a uh, you know place to sit down under some shade. Uh, sits down and and he utters. Uh, we we sometimes we think that oh the, the, he had this interaction with uh with the angel that said hey should I you know uh, basically remove this town from the from the face of the earth and he said no you know have mercy on them. But uh, we we skip some skip sometimes skip over the the part of the story where the Prophet Sallam sends up a du'a. Uh, to Allah, in which he says that, uh, oh Allah, to you I complain of my weak state. You know, you can tell that he's been frustrated. He's been driven out essentially of Mecca when they're boycotted. He's been driven out now literally from this place. Where, where else is he going to go? And so he lifts up 
uh, this divine complaint, but uh, in, in, in a respectful manner. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, have a, uh, a candid back and forth like that you think it, that people would have, uh, you know, just on the street and with one another, but he has an honest and respect and respectable and dignified exchange. And so thinking about, um, you know, this aspect of having sabar, but still being able to express our emotions in a uh, respectful and appropriate manner. Um, so we can wish for miracles, but even in our traditions, the prophets had to work as, as we just showed that the Prophet Sallallahu despite being chosen by Allah, despite being sent as Rahmatul Alameen, had to work, had to climb up that mountain, had to go uh, preach to people, had to endure the difficulties of this world. And so uh, the help of Allah does not negate hardships which come from Allah, who is most wise, the merciful and equitable. Uh, rather, uh, it may be coming alongside them and, and or it might be coming within their different, wrapped in, that, in the different forms of these trials and hardships. So be able to be aware of these. Um, so how do we live with these names of Al-Ghalib and Al-Nasr? That first and foremost, we have faith and hope that Allah's help will come in some way, shape, or form. We have to have some faith that that will come, that none will prevail over Allah's will at the end of the day, regardless of what the circumstances look like, uh, to continue to work until the end, to continue to do our end of the bargain, to know that our efforts will never be wasted, even if we may not see the fruits of our labor in this life, knowing that those seeds are planted for the life to come and that knowing that Allah aids the oppressed wherever they may be and so similarly we too should be those who help others and not be the ones who uh, whom, who seek Allah's help against us so we want to be the people uh, as we want Allah to help us we too want to help others uh, and this, these names uh, segue into another beautiful name of Allah's that is Al-Fatah. Uh, Al-Fatah is the opener and you know we all face doors in our life that close or times where it feels like we're just blocked in, that everything is just shutting, there's no, no way out. Uh, Allah invites us to know him in these situations by the name of Al-Fatah, uh, which has the root meaning of opening or unlocking, uh, and it gives rise to the meanings of uh, one who judges, one who decides, uh, one who opens a way forward or gives relief. Uh, and Al-Ghazali said that every closed thing can be opened by Al-Fatah. Uh, whatever seems impossible, uh, the situations in which we need relief and anything that we don't understand, these things are also opened by al-fatah. Um, and so there's different types of opening. You know, you have the, the literal sense, you have the metaphorical, you have the spiritual, you have the external, the internal. So it's vast in meaning and it addresses us in our different parts of our lives, wherever those doors might be shut, wherever we maybe need of an opening. Um, and so you have uh, opening the doors of opportunity, you have the opening of your uh, doors and opportunity of healing, you have opening of blessings that come down, you have the opening of hearts, the opening of guidance, the uh, opening of the doors of relief, all these different doors come in, um, and often paired with uh, names like Al-Alim, uh, that say that show that this this opening is not uh, just you know out of vain. This opening is with knowledge, it's with wisdom, it's with understanding. Though we may not understand it at the time, as we cited the incident at Hudaybiyah, the Sahaba didn't understand at the time. But you have uh, the Quran say that Inna fatahna laka fatan mubina, uh, that it uses the word of opening that verily we have granted you a manifest victory or a great triumph and. Uh, seeing uh, this fatah that we've uh, not just granted you a victory, but we've also opened up, um, you know, this this outlet. So seeing the the intersection of victory as well as uh, the uh, intersection of opening. And so, um, you know, when we when we see fatah Makkah, when we see these the, this aspect, it's not just the opening of Makkah. You have the the conquest, not just the conquest of Mecca, but you have the victory that is at Mecca. You have the, the opening in a sense because an opportunity is being opened. Something new is, a new chapter is being turned, a new page is being turned. And so uh, when we know that Allah is Al-Fatah, uh, we know that it means to work to achieve it on our end, to work to achieve the result that we want, to not lose hope if we don't get what we want immediately to be able to understand we have faith in Allah to see how things will come about. And then lastly, how do we live with these names or with this name of Al-Fatah? We have hope, inshallah, in Allah's openings. Uh, we work towards them. Uh, we cultivate uh, our faith and God consciousness uh, that they lead to openings. And we understand that they lead to openings because we are aware beyond just of the corporeal and the 
uh, that which is in our limited space here, but understanding that in the month of Ramadan, in these last few nights here, uh, we remember what we opened the month with saying that fasting, as the Quran says, fasting is prescribed for you, that it was prescribed for people before you, that it may make you God conscious. And so seeing this God conscious this not as just a product of fasting, but as an outlet and an open door to so many other things. And so one of those things being uh, this, this aspect of recognizing al-fatah and that Allah can open other doors for us. It may start with something like fasting and then attaining God consciousness and then realizing the other potentials in our lives. So seeing that and connecting that to our very real circumstances at the moment, uh, remembering that openings might vary. They may not look exactly like what you hope, uh, but to also, with all the other names of Allah, to similarly, as we would like Allah to be with us with these names, we be as such to the world around us, to the people around us, to be keys for people to open different doors uh, that might have shut on them, uh, to be keys for good, uh, to help others in that which is good, uh, and to cooperate in matters of goodness and not in matters that will uh, bring uh, Allah's uh, displeasure and, and in things like transgression, uh, injustices and all these different things are shutting doors for other people and, and hurting other people. So inshallah, we ask Allah to continue to open the doors of opportunity for us, to uh, open the doors that sometimes shut on our eyes from seeing the world around us as, as, it's, as it truly is, from seeing Allah at work in the world. And so we ask Allah to open our hearts, open our eyes, uh, and to be al-nasir and al-ghalib for us when uh, these doors uh, not only shut, but when we feel defeated when we feel uh, in a space of hopelessness that we uh, continue to have hope that Allah allows us to be a people of hope, a people of help, a people of victory, and a people of openness, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.